lots of people say being, you know, when we first got married, everybody said to us, you know, marriage is hard, marriage is hard. But I think every season has its hard things. Being married is hard, being single is hard, being pregnant is hard, not being pregnant is hard, having kids is hard, not having kids is hard. So I think every season is what you make of it. But I will say, I cannot remember life without Joran in it. Yeah. Okay, so rewind when you were both single. You were living where? Uh, I was living in Lebanon, mm -hmm. actually, Tennessee, mm -hmm. about 20 miles east of here, because okay. I had a job out there. I remember the first time I met you in the tent at conference, the first conference. Oh yeah. And we were all like super like, is this guy, is this the guy? He better take care of me. Because yeah. Mia's like the TV Co national treasure behind my husband, yeah. or equal path. And, <laughs> <laughs> and we were all like, and I remember being like, oh my gosh. And then, okay, but then you were living in Nashville. Yeah, I was living in Franklin. Um, and actually the way that we met was kind of unique because um, Jerome was living in Lebanon and he had come to church and visited our church. And I remember seeing him and he always says that I, that I like looked at him and then I licked my lips, which is, I don't think is true, but it could have happened because look at him. Um, <laughs> But I remember seeing him at church and he just stood out. And I, 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 in the past, I've been very bad at like flirting, um, which I wasn't trying to like bait someone for attention. But um, one of my guy friends has said, if, if guys don't know that you're interested, then, you know, they maybe won't go for it. That's a word for someone. That's a word for somebody. Um, <laughs> stop throwing out the friend card. Um, so I, I had walked past him and I saw him and I was like, wow. And then I and then I just thought, you know what? I'm gonna look at him again so that he knows that I, I wasn't just- it. I wasn't coincidentally looking at him. It was like very obvious, no, it's you that I was looking at. So I turned around again and I made eye contact just for a little bit too long. And I smiled and then he smiled back and then I walked off. And actually he um, added me on Facebook that night and I started thinking, oh, should I poke him or something like that when that was still a thing? Do you remember the poke? Like, and, a, and a poke says it all, like I poked you, I like you. But then honestly, I felt like the Holy Spirit say, you don't need to bait people for what I have for you. So I just left it. And and then to be honest, like I forgot about it and yeah, so you I moved was, away. Yeah, so at the time I was living in Lebanon and visiting the church with a friend um, and I remember seeing her make a beeline it for me, basically. And she was wearing, <laughs> remember exactly what she was wearing. She was wearing high heels with jeans and a t-shirt that said, like a virgin. And she, <laughs> and she it was saw a Madonna t-shirt, which I never <laughs> wore to church ever again because I realized it was a little bit like maybe off. <laughs> it was scary. But uh, anyway, she, she looked at me and then she turned around and then beelined it back for me. And I did remember thinking the, the thing that was so attractive about her was how confident she was and letting me know. Was it basically what she said with her eyes, hello. <laughs> and, I, and I was thinking the same. I yeah, was like, you were. I was like, let's go, hello. <laughs> so then, then how long after that did you meet me? So it was like two years later. So when I, wow. yeah, so when I finally asked her out, I had moved to Chattanooga. Yes. Um, and I asked her out while I was in Chattanooga. And I said, I'm gonna drive up this weekend. I'd stalked her enough to know that she wasn't dating anyone, I didn't think she was. So I said, I'm gonna drive up this weekend and take you on a date. Yeah, the way that he reached out to me, you know, in in between like Joran and I seeing each other and us actually meeting officially yeah. and dating. The funny thing was, is like after church, that night after church where he had seen me, he had come to um, Pinewood Social, which is this restaurant that was right near our church. and. I remember he went with one of his friends that was trying to date one of my friends and they were both there to stalk us out. And then we were both there going, where are all the guys, you know? And they were just sitting across the way, but we didn't know, you know, which I think is so funny. You can have your miracle in the room and not even realize it. Ooh, that's um, another word. You know, which, yeah, <laughs> like just even like the timing of God is so important because had we met then, you know, I think God would still have orchestrated something beautiful, but the story that he wrote in the two year wait was actually something so profound so that by the time we did meet, we both knew that we knew that we knew um, God did this, you know? And like, that's something we go back 
in our marriage about all the time, like God did this and God did this for us, you know, and there's a real, there's a real peace and a real grace knowing that, knowing that you, there was no mistake, that it was so intentional, that heaven was really intentional with you. So um, in the two years, like I had gone to God and I had said, God, I, I trust you and I wanna do this your way and I've always wanted to do it your way. But truthfully, I had seen God move in every single area of my life except for this one area, the area of relationships. And in that area, all I had known is disappointment and delay. And, you know, I moved to the South and I was like 34 and still hadn't met anyone. And apparently in the South, that's like being a Christian over 21 who's not married in the South is a bit unusual. Um, but I just said to God one day in church, I'm going to keep trusting you, but I need it. I need you to like let me in on your plan because you know the plans you have for me, but I'd love to like be let in on them. And God gave me this picture of a furniture warehouse. And basically he said, you can pick anything you want. And I was blown away because in, in this vision that I was having at church, it was all one of pieces of furniture. And for some reason, just they didn't, I went around and every now and then I'd see something that I like and someone would get there before me. And I, it, that's how I'd felt in, in life that something would feel like it was God and then it would get like, the rug would get pulled out from underneath me. And, um, Basically, in the, in the vision, I come back to God and I say to God, God, I want to do this, but I don't want to do this without you. I don't want to pick unless you're going to pick with me. And the father heart of God, I felt it like right where I was standing and God said to me, you know, all of this stuff is good. I'm the one who actually made all of it. So I, I have a heart for all of it and I love all of it. But there's things in this room that are, that are better for you than other things. But if you really want me to, to orchestrate this and pick for you, then I will custom make you something. And honestly, that was a word that I held on to for like two years. And God took me on this journey of showing me that like I, he could be trusted even when it looked like there was nothing on the horizon. And I would, I would literally walk out life looking for evidence of what he was doing instead of evidence of like what wasn't happening. Um, and then there was this one moment, a couple of months before I met Joran, where God had said to me, it's I loudly, while, when I was in worship in church, I loudly heard God say, it's in the mail. And, um, you know, if it's in the mail, like, then that's a good thing. And it was funny because if, if I ever would see somebody, like there was one time this person at church that I thought, oh yeah, he's a bit all right. Like maybe I'll go and say hello. And loudly the Holy Spirit said to me, you don't have to go to mail, mail comes to you. And you know, there's some, let's go. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> don't worry. It doesn't go to the church okay, anymore. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, it was just like quite profound because I remember, um, you know, this two years goes by and I get this random Facebook, you know, message email thing on like the messenger app and the email says, um, you don't know me, but two years ago, I saw you at your church and you smiled at me and I've remembered it ever since. And I don't even live in Nashville anymore, but I would love to take you on a, on a date this weekend. Do you want to go on a date? And the Holy Spirit, I've I read that and the Holy Spirit loudly says to me, I told you it was in the mail. And I went, the email, you're fun. That's so funny. Cause wow. God has yeah. such a sense of humor yeah. about the way he does things. So I wrote back to Joran and I said, I wasn't smiling at you. I was smiling at the guy behind you. Um, but sure, if you want to go on a date, great. <laughs> because I had to see what his sense of humor was like. And cause I'm a little bit of a self sabotager sometimes, but he wrote back and was like, oh, that's okay. Well, like we can just totally like have a go at it and see what, see how it goes. Like, and I thought, you know, and then we talked that whole week and I don't know if you want to talk about like your side of things. Yeah. Um, so two years, rewind two years when I was living in Lebanon, um, I actually had had really bad experiences with uh, dating. And I kind of got to the place where I was like, oh, do I even want to get married? Like no one gets my jokes. No one understands me. And I remember this didn't happen just once. This happened three or four times. My favorite thing to do on Saturday morning was, now it's having breakfast with you. Okay. But <laughs> it was, I would get up, get a coffee and go out to this field and just walk the um, property line and just pray. And I kept seeing, pictures of Mia, because I remember her from when she smiled and looked her lips at me in church. Um, and I kept, I, he I heard God say, she'll get your jokes. She'll, she'll understand you. And um, Mia thinks that story's amazing because her name actually means my field. 
and actually Joran's name, so Mia means my in Italian and fields obviously means fields, so my fields. And then Joran's name means, um, Joran means farmer, which is just, I mean, I think God is just so in the details and if you, if you if you'll find what you're looking for. So if you're not looking for, for God's fingerprints on things, then you'll miss them. And God will still be kind to you anyway, but like how much more beautiful and more profound to like look for the fingerprints of God on everything. I think it makes you so much more grateful. Mm -hmm. um, and it makes you realize none of it's by coincidence. God actually is so intentional. He's so detailed and he so wants to go above and beyond anything that we could even ask for. So then I drove up, we had never met before in real life. We'd never even really interacted on social media. We had one phone conversation. Yeah. And then on our first date, we decided to get married kind of. <laughs> it was kind of a joke, but like yeah. I was sort of being serious and you know, we, we had gone on this date and then, um, and it was just, it was just fun and yeah, easy. It just was like, it just was like, like I remember your one liner, you reached, we were uh, in the car because we weren't, the date was over, but we weren't ready for it to be over yeah. yet. So where like, was the date? Um, it was in downtown Franklin. Cork and Cow. Cork and Cow, which is like one of my favorite restaurants. Yeah. It was funny because the, the bartender there, um, we were sitting at the bar um, and the bartender um, leans forward and goes, I've never seen you in a dress. And I go, I'm on a date like this um, as a joke. and. And then the, the bartender goes, how's it going? And I said, yeah, great. I think we're probably going to get married. And then Joran just goes like, yeah, like, and then. So on our drive, yeah. So on our drive to the, I guess the, the post date, wherever we went somewhere. We went to another restaurant. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, we went to Pinewood Social, which yeah. is funny because that's the first time that you had stalked me. So. Yeah. Well, she like leaned <laughs> over and reached and grabbed my hair and just said, or not grab my hair, but just grabbed <laughs> the back of my neck and just said, um, I feel like we didn't even have to go on this first date, but we sort of just owed it to the world. And I thought, wow, that was an amazing one line. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm which, in. which I wasn't trying to orchestrate something, but God had spoke to me so much that like, I just felt this such this confidence and this peace, yeah. which I had not felt before. I think so often in, it, the guys that I date had, I, I'd been on edge so much and just so like, just expected to be disappointed. And, and to be honest, like, you know, you'll have what you expect, you know, and I'm not saying that like, sometimes you don't expect the best and, and, and horrible things happen. Everybody has a free will, but you know, for me, I just had such a bad experience that I met Joran and I just, I had this like absolute confidence that God was gonna follow through on like a promise that he'd given me. And the funny thing was is, you know, every promise that God gives you, you, you it's so tough, but you have to hold it loosely because you know, you're not in charge of somebody else's will. So how do you trust God with a promise that's dependent on somebody else's free will? And I remember God saying like, my promise is good even outside of this guy who seems like the exact answer to your prayers and the exact like way I'm gonna orchestrate it. I felt like God say, I need you to come up even higher and I need you to trust me that my word is good even outside of him, which I think is something that we're all kind of like navigating all the time. like. Can you trust God even outside of your circumstance or like the way that it looks or, you know, the way that it doesn't look? Yeah. And I feel like so many women are giving the advice, you know, play the game, play hard to get. Mm -hmm. And I understand what they mean by that. What they mean by is that is know your worth, know your value. And don't be afraid to set boundaries and communicate. But one of the things that I loved about me is she didn't do that. She definitely, I could tell that she was confident, secured. She knew who she was. Um, but she didn't play any games with me or try to play hard to get. And that actually made me want to pursue her even more. Really? I mean, yeah. Oh, I, so, sweet. so I remember the next, the next day I called you up and I just said, Hey, I don't know about you, but I'm feeling this. Let's just do it. And then I think your response was something like, yeah, I mean, I don't care if you have a congenital twin growing out of your butt, we'll cut it off and just <laughs> figure it out. <laughs> Did I say that? I you probably did. did. <laughs> I, thought <it> was so, <laughs> I thought it was so funny. I was like, this girl's hilarious. Uh, yeah. I, I was a chubby child who played the tuba with bad acne, so I had to figure out how to survive in high school, and that's how, <laughs> with a bit of humor. Bro, um, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm probably saying a lot of embarrassing things, sorry. No, I mean, you're telling the truth, so that's all good. <laughs>